AP Statistics. In this video, we are continuing Unit 3, talking about sampling. I've already talked to you in the last video about um, a couple of sampling methods that are not good because they lead to bias. So now we're going to talk about good sampling methods. So anything, anytime we want to sample, we want to do so randomly because that will make our lives better. So random sampling, of course, involves using a chance process. That is the goal. So there are a few different kinds of random samples that we're going to talk about. And some of them are better for certain situations. Just It just depends. So firstly, I want to apologize for my formatting here. These should be little bullet points. I forgot to save it as a PDF, and I'm not going to go back and change it. So there. Okay, so a simple random sample. So what does this look like? Well, it's defined all beautifully here as a simple random sample as size of size n is chosen in such a way that every group of that size, every group of n in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. So what is that going to look like? Well, a, a simple random sample, for lack of a better word, a simple way to think about it, Let's say that I've got all of my students and I decide to, let's say I've got 10 students and I decide to number them 1 through 10 and then I get a bowl and I put 10 little pieces of paper in it with all the numbers in it, etc., etc. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. And then I mix it up, swish, swish, swish around, and then I pull out two of you to like, you know, get ice cream or something, something magical. So that is a simple random sample because every group of two students has an equal chance of being chosen. So that's why it's called a simple random sample. Everybody's name goes in a bowl, you mix it up, you pull them out, life is good. Okay, if you're sampling without replacement, that means uh, in this case, for instance, once I pull a student's name out, I don't put it back in. Okay, so that means everyone can only be selected at one time. And when you're sampling with replacement, an indi individual can be selected more than once. So there you go. Often when your simple random sample is people or something like that, since you can't have repeat individuals, you're usually doing it without replacement. Okay, so the next way that we sample randomly is through a stratified random sample. Now, I'm going to do this when I think that some characteristic in the population might affect the outcome. Okay, so if I think people are going to answer my survey differently uh, based on their age level or fitness level or ethnicity or something like that, then I'm going to want to stratify them. So strata are your groups of individuals in your population who share characteristics thought to be associated with the variables being measured in a study. So it depends on the situation. Um, a stratified random sampling selects a sample by choosing a, an SRS, so a simple random sample, from each stratum and combining the simple random samples into one overall sample. So we're going to do some of these as examples and you'll see them later. Okay, so cluster sampling. This is another type of random sampling. The thing that's confusing about clusters is that clusters are groups of the population that are located in general near each other. So this is about location. It's not about a characteristic. So cluster sampling selects a sample by randomly choosing clusters and including each member of the selected clusters in the sample. And again, we I've got an example that shows shows you what each of these would look like in real life. And then of course we come to a systematic random sampling. And this is just going to select a sample from an ordered arrangement of the population by randomly selecting one of the first K individuals and choosing every K 
individual thereafter. So in other words, um, let's say I had everybody in my class. Uh, let's use fourth period. Okay, so fourth period's got 30 kids in it. So I've got everybody, blah, 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 all the way down to 30. And let's say I randomly choose number two. All right, I, I wouldn't just choose it. I would use my calculator. Anyway, that would be my random choice right there. And then I would choose that kid and like every fifth kid after that. So that's what a systematic uh, random sample would look like. Okay, so those are the different types of good sampling methods. So um, I'm going to end this video so you don't get too bored. And then my next video will talk about some other stuff. Later, dudes.